And praise the Lord, everybody. Round two. You guys are the ones that sleep in, huh? Welcome to church. Glad you're here. Oh, I understand. God is so good. Aren't you glad to be a part of the kingdom of God? Amen. If you love your pastor, get loud and clap your hands and thank the Lord for him. That's what I'm talking about. That's where it's at. You're very blessed to have the Zunigas uh, leading you. They're incredible people. We love them very much, and, and I give them honor. Give honor to all the pastors on staff. Honor to my awesome son, Jet the Threat, and my wife just had our fourth child last week, and so I apologize that I'm just now getting here. We're supposed to be here all, last, all this month, and uh, it's been a crazy crazy month and he took his time being born he was supposed to be here and they said around the beginning of august and so he came around the end of august and so we're we're thankful that he's here and i'm thankful to be here with you i preached a message this morning uh in the first service that i felt strongly that the lord had told me to preach here and across this nation uh, and so i will repeat it and preach it to you here it will be obviously go different but i just feel a strong anointing to do this exodus chapter 7 and Luke chapter 11, if I can get a little bit more monitor, guys, I don't know who I'm looking for, but if I can get a little more monitor, thank you, I'd appreciate it. You can turn me off out there, I don't care, just keep me up up here, amen. Exodus chapter 7, thank you, verses 8 through 13, and then we're going to go to Luke chapter 11, verse 34. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying... When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you. Everybody say, Show a miracle. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh. It shall become a serpent. Moses and Aaron went unto Pharaoh, and they did so. As the Lord had commanded, and Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Pharaoh called also, or also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and he hardened Pharaoh's heart that he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Luke chapter 11 and verse number 34 Luke eleven thirty four. 34, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. And I want to preach to you from the subject this morning, the intoxication of entertainment. The intoxication of of entertainment. Lord Jesus, have your way in this place. Speak to every family, every situation, every battle, every crisis, everything going on at home, God. We open up the doorways to not just our hearts in this room, but we open up the doorways to our houses right now in the spirit, God. Speak to our homes in Jesus' name. Have your way, we pray. And somebody said, amen. And you may be seated. I say that there are Several steps to becoming fully intoxicated, and the ultimate step is death when, you're, when you die from intoxication, but it starts off by being sober, and you get subliminal, uh, you get very uh, slowly, you graduate into euphoria, and then from euphoria, you go into excitement, and then from excitement, you step into confusion, and the more you drink, you go into a place called a stupor. And then from there, comatose, and then death. And that is the process of dying by intoxication. And it's funny how when this pandemic broke out, everyone has said the same thing, including me, that we are all being attacked by the spirit of fear. And fear is attacking our churches and attacking our people. And I do think that is true because fear has still gripped people. People are still not coming to church. Going to Walmart is fine, apparently, and Home Depot, there's no, but going to church, there's something fearful about that. If that doesn't tell you it's a spirit, I don't know what does, 
because it's funny how we can have faith to go out in public, but not faith to be in the presence of the Lord. And so fear has attached itself to people, but, but the other spirit that I noticed that came on the heels of fear into America by storm, and you would think it would not have happened because Hollywood was shut down and the sports world was shut down and the music industry was shut down. There were no concerts, but yet the, the spirit that took America by storm during the pandemic has been the spirit of entertainment. Church is now entertainment. People watch online. They watch while they wash the dishes or while they are doing the laundry or cooking dinner, and they're, they're being entertained by church. And so it's funny how entertainment has gripped America, and I know you may not believe it yet, but you will, and this, this spirit is very, very subtle and very strong, and it's very intentional in how to take out people from the presence of God. The pandemic will cause one of two results in your walk with God. Either when this thing is over, you will be closer to God than you were before because you've upped your consecration, or you will be further from God than you were before because you've drifted into entertainment. Welcome Pharaoh into the atmosphere. When God told Moses to go deliver three million people in one night, you're going to encounter the king of Egypt, and this king's identity as Pharaoh, the first thing you're going to deal with when you deal with him, Moses, is not the spirit of bondage or the spirit of slavery or the baby killing spirit, but the first thing you're going to encounter when you deal with Pharaoh is the spirit of entertainment. For Pharaoh will look at you and he will say, show me a miracle. And when you're done entertaining me, Moses, I will bring on my worldly entertainers and they will entertain me when you are done. Not much has changed in the church. People are entertained by the encounter the man of God has with God and the anointing that is on him. But give them a couple hours when they're home and they're being entertained by something else. And you're ready now, I'm going to find you. And the reason why you responded during the music, but not that right there, is because a lot of you have relationships with music, but not the word of God. And therefore, the music engages you, but the word of God entertains you because you do not know how to participate with the word, only spectate when the word comes to you. I have not come to entertain you, and this is not a theater. This is the house of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're not paying for your seat. You're in a place that Jesus died for every sin in our life. Somebody praise him like you're in your house. Praise him like nobody's in the room. Praise him like nobody's watching you. You're not here to watch a show. You're here to please God. David said, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. But... He told Moses, here's what's going to happen. He's going to want to know all about this encounter. He's going to want to be entertained because he, he's going to have plagues coming. But the, it, it's just in the human nature when, when stuff starts going crazy to start watching. He's going to watch you and then look at the magicians and say, now you entertain me. And the problem with the entertainment mentality in church, in living for God, is that when you get like that, you unleash a snake fight in the spirit. And now Moses' rod turns into a serpent and the magicians turn their rods into serpents. And you've got a fight on your hands. Your breakthrough that you get in church now wars with your breakdown when no one's around. The anointing you feel right now starts fighting with the addiction that you have that nobody knows about. I wish I had some people that would act like I'm preaching to them. When you're in the house of God and you're in entertainment mode you like what you feel but then what you feel starts convicting you for what you watch (laughs) and there's a fight going on in the spirit and God as long as I'm satisfied just well 
Just watch the service, watch the service, watch the service. Then I'll never truly get delivered. But when I start to engage, when I start to participate, when I start to recognize I need deliverance, I've got to get closer to God. I need a deeper prayer life. I need a stronger walk with him. When I start to get like that, now a fight breaks out between what I need to do and what I want to do. Is there anyone that knows that your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak and what you need to do oftentimes is difficult because of what you want to do. I need to pray through, but I want to watch Netflix. I need to read my Bible. I want to get on social media. I need to have a walk with God. I need. I want to hang out with them. Someone needs to recognize you need to put what you want in its place and put what you need in its place and say that has to be a higher priority in my life. Uh, he's like, wow, this is so... So cool. You can turn the rod into a snake. You can turn. In other words, I like what I feel at church. And I like what I feel when I'm watching the movie. Totally different entertainment. But I'm fine. Definition, you are carnal. Oh, that was such good preaching. I like it. I like to feel good at church. And so... Pharaoh, his heart is hardened because no matter what miracle you see, when you are in entertainment mode, it doesn't transform you. That's why there's more miracles overseas than America. Because God will not do the miraculous in America until we stop trying to watch him. And then never change. When he healed people in the New Testament, he healed, then taught, then taught them to change them. That was the process. Healing, then teaching, or teaching, then healing. But he wants to heal us and teach us, or teach us, then heal us. We want him to heal us while we stay the same. Just heal the disease while I don't pray through. Heal the disease while I don't get a walk with you. That's not going to work. That's why he doesn't heal a lot of people in America. And so we're entertained by it. And Pharaoh said, I like it. Meet me tomorrow for round two. This is great. They go to the river. Moses and Aaron turn the rot water into blood. Pretty powerful. Magicians, you do your thing. Water into blood. In fact, it was so, it was no big deal to him because the New Living Translation said Pharaoh went into his house and put all these things out of his mind. In other words, what he, what he watched was just, wow, that was a great show. And then forgot about it. It is dangerous when you forget what was preached 30 minutes after church. Thank you, six of you. It is dangerous when you want to tell your friends about what happened at church, but you can't remember the message title because in between church and the conversation, something else has entertained you and taken away the memory. The memory of the move of God. Moves of God only erase from your memory when something else is entertaining you after you've seen the power of God. Well, I'd love to tell you what happened. I forget what the title was. He preached somewhere out of the Bible. You know what I want to say if you said, what were you watching afterwards? What were you listening to on the way home? What, what, what social media site were you on? Because you have forgotten what was so important. Round three is frogs. This is very gross. God said, Look at the ponds, the rivers, the streams, and, whew, and from the borders, Moses unleashes frogs all throughout Egypt. And the Pharaoh said, whoa, it's kind of creepy, weird, powerful. Entertainers, Janus and Jambres is what Timothy called them, the magicians that were their names. Janus and Jambres do the same thing, and they did it too, frogs. Pretty powerful when you can make a frog appear, you saying. There's so many frogs. Remember, you go from, from being sober to euphoria to excitement and to confusion. And so many frogs at first. Wait a second. Now, they're, they're starting to get in the palace. They're starting to get up here. Uh, get those out of there. Get those. We need to get the. See, it didn't, never bothered him before because it wasn't in his house. The, the pandemic doesn't bother you if it never gets near you, but when it starts to get near you, and and so that's, they're, the frogs are in the in the bedroom, Moses. They're they're by the throne. They're I mean they're just everywhere. Can you get can you 
Can you get rid of the frogs? Yeah, when do you want me to get rid of them? And Pharaoh said, tomorrow. The number one signal you are drunk on entertainment is you want deliverance tomorrow. I want to walk with God. I just want it tomorrow. I want a prayer life. I'll just start it tomorrow. I want to start reading my Bible tomorrow. I want to fast tomorrow. I want to witness tomorrow. I'll start paying my tithes tomorrow. You know what you're saying? Is, you're saying, I want it, but I'm being entertained by something else. Let me just put this in your spirit. Entertainment does not kill the desire to consecrate. It kills the discipline to follow through in the consecration. Entertainment doesn't stop you from wanting to get right with God, but it stops you, Shataya, from following through when you want to get right with God. Somebody ought to put the devil in his place right now as I'm about to follow through on some commitments, on some prayer, on some desire, on some consecration. Well, I want to do it, but you don't understand, Brother Josh. I, if, I, if I stop watching the series I'm watching, I won't know who dies. I'm not even preaching to you. We're on different planets. I won't know what's going to happen in my fairy tale world. Your head is buried in the sand spiritually. When you say, I'd rather keep a connection to a world that's fantasy and not real than to connect to a God who's calling it out. And Pharaoh said, I want it tomorrow. Just one more show. Let's just watch one more episode. Oh. Moses said, okay, whatever you want. One more night with the frogs. And boom, the next day, frogs disappear. And God tells Moses, all right, now turn the ground and the dust into lice, which is some translations say ticks. Regardless, not very friendly things you want, around, you, know, you want near you. Lice and ticks, that's great. Everywhere. And here come the magicians. And they go to turn the dust into lice. And it didn't work. Because if you stay around the anointing long enough, sooner or later the entertainment will not be able to keep up. Sooner or later, if you stay around the fire long enough, what entertains you will start to say, I can't do what you're doing. In fact, the magicians looked at Pharaoh, read the Bible, and said, this is the finger of God. In other words, they told Pharaoh, the guy you brought in this palace has got more power than what you've been allowed to entertain. In other words, your entertainment starts to scream out to you that what you're getting on Sunday morning in this sanctuary is more powerful than what you're watching Friday night in your living room and and the enemy knows I said hell knows that if you ever engage in what's going on in here you'll be delivered from what you're bound by out there but you've got to disconnect yourself from what you're watching you know why because it is the trick of the enemy to get you to have two lives going at the same time Oh boy, here we go. Yes. It is the trick of the enemy to get you to try to live in two currents, two flows. That's what happened in Acts 27. They were driving the ship, and the Bible said they came to a place where two seas met, which means two opposite currents, and they tried to drive the ship through two opposite currents, and they ran the ship aground. In other words, when you try when you try to have God over here and the world here, but they're all in here at the same time, you're destined to shipwreck. You can't. Oh, I feel it. You can't be spiritual at 11.30 to 1 on Sunday and then be your old self from 1 till next Sunday morning. Sooner or later, you've got to put one ship to death and say, that ship is not sailing with me anymore. I'm not going down that stream. I am going to give my shata. I'm going to give myself to the will of God. I'm going to give myself to the ways of God. I'm going to give myself to the plan of God. Mm. That's why the Bible says that 
Your, your eye is the light. And when your eye is single, your whole body is full of light. When your eye is focused, one vision, looking at one thing, trying to do one thing. But when your eye is evil, when, your eye, when you've got other things trying, you're trying to put God in a box while you keep the pornography addiction over here. You're trying to keep God and keep, keep worshiping like nothing's wrong when you've got a pill addiction going on. That, he said that's when the body is full of darkness. James said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. If you're feeling unstable, you've got more than one door open in your house. You're letting God in on Sunday and let something in on Sunday night. Hmm. And now Pharaoh said, well, what do I do? Because these guys have always entertained me. But now I'm being frustrated. In fact, the name Janus means to vex. And so now I'm being vexed by entertainment. In fact, you'll read right here, Pharaoh never uses the magicians again at this point because he recognized what's entertaining me is not as powerful as the anointing on this Moses. Hmm. So you know, you know you ought to, some of you ought to do yourself a favor and just speak out loud to whatever show it is or song it is or whatever you're addicted to and speak it out loud that what is entertaining me is not as powerful as my pastor's anointing. And if you'll start speaking that and declaring that out loud, you'll sense a drawing to the Moses in your atmosphere and a disconnect from the magicians in your world. Because some of you are trying to live in the miraculous and the magical at the same time, and it does not work. You cannot have miracles and magic. You must make up your mind. Do you want the spirit or do you want the sorcery? We just love to watch Frozen 2 or 28 or whatever it is. And all the little things, they're no big deal. Just, just a little bit of sorcery, sorcery. Yeah. Almost all those Disney movies have sorcery, by the way. Thank you to all seven of you and those lying, denying people. Well, it's no big deal. I'll show you how big of a deal it is in a minute. Sorcery. And so he said, well, okay, I'm done with the magicians. Now, the spirit says, go submit to Moses right now. Ask his forgiveness. Let him go. Repent. But Pharaoh just keeps being entertained. Because there are some people that don't do any of that worldly stuff, but they still come to church to watch. I really want to mess with you because I see some of you right now. Because somehow, something in this world has convinced them that they are untouchable. And therefore, it's fine to relax and watch what God is doing. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Pharaoh said, hmm, okay, this is not doing it for me anymore. I'm going to keep watching the show. Keep doing the miracles. Wow. Flies and darkness and hail and boils. All these different plagues are being loosed. And Pharaoh's still fine. Until the plague comes to his house. And the plague kills his boy. And the scary part about entertainment is that when you're drunk on it, when you're intoxicated with it, you do things you can't even fathom and you say things you can't even imagine because Pharaoh comes to Moses with a dead kid and Moses who has power like no human being has ever had in the planet. Moses has all this authority. Moses could probably raise the dead. He can kill the living. He's got pretty much all the stuff he needs and Pharaoh looks at the guy with all the power and says, last words Pharaoh ever said in the Bible to Moses, bless me also. Entertainment says, even though my kids are dying, even though my family's going to hell, make me more comfortable. It's quiet. Now I found you. Make it better for me personally. Who cares who's losing what? Who cares who's going through what? I want more stuff. Where are the shouters now? They left the building. 
Pharaoh says, yes, he's dead. I, he, could, he, he could say, please raise my son from the dead. Please forgive me. Please pray for my boy. Please, please, whatever, protect my family. No, bless me. Who says bless me with a dead kid in front of them? Somebody drunk on the show, watching church, watching miracles, how many Sunday, you don't have Sunday night right now. Go back in your mind. How many Sunday nights were there crazy breakthroughs in this building and you watched but did not participate? Oh, I'm, I'm feeling it now. Get out of here, Moses. Just go, bitter spirit. Get, just get away. Just uh, get out of here. And Moses heads to the river, the Red Sea, and and when they get to the Red Sea, he opens it up, and they go through, and Pharaoh changes his mind. I just want one more show. And so he chases Moses into the Red Sea. You remember how he started the encounter, show, show a miracle? And now he dies watching a miracle. He dies watching the miracle wash over him. Oh, he dies watching the power of God drown him. He, oh, it's quiet. I'm not connecting it to you. He, he dies watching what entertained him. There are people in this room dying spiritually despite every breakthrough they experience Sundays. Everything that comes by their pew, every tear that drops out of their eye, it's coming and God's trying to wash and, and yet they're dying because all they want to do is watch. <laughs> Come on, preacher, get us excited. We'll get excited in a minute. Maybe. Maybe not. Michael looked at David, her husband, and he was dancing before the Lord. And she said, oh, you're just, you're just she, was watching, she was watching the show and everyone else was worshiping and she's watching it. And she gets bitter because when you watch church, you become bitter before long. When you become a spectator, it's easy to criticize and analyze why well, I didn't like his tone there and I didn't like how he said this and I didn't, what he really mean by that and what you're doing is you are, you are letting hell know I am no longer engaged with the body of Christ I am now trying to find something wrong with it and therefore you can use me as a mouthpiece to attack my preacher and attack leadership and when you become like that, everything stands out to you. Every little flaw of the church stands out to you because you're no longer looking for revival. You're looking to critique. Oh, I'm preaching to you. And so, and, and Michael started critiquing David, and she said, oh, you're trying to show off for all the girls and everything like that. And David said, oh, I'm going to wor worship even more than that. Here's the end, end, end of it. When, when it's over, when David's done worshiping, Michael gets barren. She had seven boys before that, and Michael goes barren from that day forward, and her seven boys, a few chapters later, are executed publicly in front of everyone. Ready for this? If Michael and Pharaoh were in this room, and they could preach one time to you from the gates of hell where they are, they would look up at you and say, the cost of intoxicating entertainment is the loss of your children. I could put the mic down right now, but I'm not, try, I'm not sure some of you would even go to the altar. Spirit of prayer, just hit this room just now. Spirit of prayer, just hit this room. But it's not, it's not on some of you yet, so I can't. I literally could put the mic down right now. Because the cost of entertainment might not get you. But it will get the one coming behind you. You might watch it and be fine but someone's watching you they're watching you not worship they're watching you talk about pastor they're watching you not pay your tithes they're watching you watch all kind of filth on the screen then raise your hands at church like you're pure and holy i wish somebody would wake up and stop being a hypocrite and st and start being real and say god save me god deliver me god rescue me 
I feel like preaching to, and I'm not, I'm not mad at you, but there's a spirit of hypocrisy in the building and in America that says we can do crazy stuff in front of our kids and then we can go act like we're holy. The devil's a liar. Someone needs to be holy in your house. Be holy in front of the kids. Pray at your... Oh, Pharaoh said, show me the miracles. Moses said, show me the glory. Pharaoh said, I'm here to watch the show. Moses said, I'm here to be the show. I'm here to do everything I can for God. Let me ask you something. What is your family really worth to you? Because I promise you, Junior, watch his dad. Watch his mom. Why do you talk this way at church and this way to us? Why do you smile to everybody in church but scream all day at us? Why are you living in two flows? Why, I'll tell you, why are you trying to impress everyone that doesn't even know you but letting everything in to the ones that love you? Well, I preach, you're preaching too hard. No, I'm really not. I'm trying to preach to all of us that we need to wake up and recognize that this thing is coming to an end and someone needs to stand up and say, I'm sick of Satan getting in the house. I want to block the doorways and protect the babies. I want to keep everything safe. Well, uh, you know, Really no big deal. I'm not saying it's a big deal to watch. I'm not attacking what you watch. If it's sinful, you should know better already. What I'm saying is when it comes to the place when you can't feel God, you can't pray more than 30 seconds unless, unless there's music in the background. When they dismiss and you're the first one out the door. You've got another flow going on. And it's entertaining you. And the spirit of fear has nothing on the spirit of entertainment. The entertainment spirit, fear spirit scares you. But the entertainment spirit wants to assassinate your kids and your family and your marriage. What do you want? How bad do you really need that show? It might do some of you some good to turn some screens off. I know this is not going to be popular, but check your screen time on your phone in the next week. And then tell me why you can't pray five minutes a day. And you know what's even worse than you is, is that I'm in a Pentecostal church having to say that. If I was facing the world, I could get it. But I'm talking to people that have been delivered rescued know the power of prayer know what it feels like to linger i wish god would give us a lingering spirit to where i'm not so anxious to get up from the prayer closet to check my phone but instead i can't wait to hear what he's going to say next in his word preacher you're all alone up there right now yeah moses was alone they killed john the baptist when he starts calling out stuff like this they cut the preacher's head off when they starts calling out the dancing going on in the house and the spirits let me is mike i'm gonna date myself real quick but i want to say something that's one of the most powerful statements i've ever heard michael landon who played charles ingles on little house on the prairie you all the michael landon said before he died that watching tv and entertainment is being entertained by people in your living room that in reality you would never let in your living room and let me just oh I feel the Holy Ghost right now I feel the Holy Ghost just because you're not doing what you're watching well I'm not doing that stuff but you're letting it in your eyes 
Can I, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Some of you are letting stuff in your eyes, and even though you're not doing it physically, it entertains your eyes, and you have more adultery in you than you realize right now because you're letting stuff in your spirit. I wish you would wake up and repent and throw the demon out and say, my eyes belong to God. My ears belong to God. My heart belongs to God. My mind, oh, it's quiet. I know we're starting to clap it, but I'm telling you, in the in the Holy Ghost, it is time. Well, I, you would never let someone do a drug deal in your living room. You would never let some people wear the clothes they're wearing in front of your kids, in front of you. Why are you preaching so hard, preacher? I'm after a spirit. If you're mad, it's because you're in love with the spirit. You can't cast out what you flirt with. But you can get mad at the guy for calling it out. And there are people in the church that defend their demons. And let me just say this. It, oh, shut up. You might be fine and still able to get up and pray. I feel fine. I can, but just because you're fine, that does not mean you should make your son deal with his daddy's demons. And you should not make your daughter deal with the monsters that her mother dealt with. Someone ought to wake up and recognize, I might be okay, but I don't know if they'll be okay in 15 years when I can't protect them. So as for me and my house somebody ought to get apostolic up in here as for we are not charismatic we're the apostolic church we're not trying to blend in with egypt we're trying to go to the promised land we're trying to become what god wants us to be stand to your feet when i say egypt i don't mean the nation i'm talking about when they were there you can't it, there was it was crazy they're there god said you'd be in bondage 400 years i want you to get this 400 years and the Bible said after 430 years, they cried unto God. And God told Moses, I have heard their cry, and I have come to deliver them. Ready? They were only supposed to be there 400 years. But 30 years after their exit date, they still had not cried to get out. And until you start crying to get out of what entertains you, and what's holding you hostage. Until you start saying, God, I'm not going to the altar to be blessed. I'm not going to the altar to feel good. I'm going to the altar to deal with me. I'm going to the altar to deal with the locked doors that I've not been, the, the things that are going wrong. I'm here to deal with me. When you start to cry out, boom, he comes down. I'm here to deliver. And right before the greatest exodus of humankind, when three million people left in one night, there was a stay-at-home decree that was issued, and everyone had to stay in their houses. And they had to social distance. You had to be in your home with your family. And everyone was afraid. And everyone was, what's going on? What's going on? Put the blood on your door, Moses said. And we're all good. We know we got the blood. Yeah, we got the blood. We're good. We're safe. We're protected. But then he said this statement. He said, and stay in your houses. Because it's scary when you try to live outside the blood. And that's why you can plead the blood and it doesn't work because you're not submitted to the blood. And you've got to get behind the blood because there's about to be a deliverance. Jesus is about to come back. And you can't say, well, I was baptized, but then I live like a devil. I got the Holy Ghost, but I skip church every week. I did this, but I could care less about being faithful. When you do that, you're saying, I got the blood on the door, but I'm not in the house. Moses said, you'll die. You won't make it. You won't survive. You're watching your way into hell. Now, if I tell you this, you've got to understand. When the world, if this, there's probably, never, we're probably not going back to the way things were. I hope you understand that. Okay, some of you are delusional, but we're, we're not going back, okay? <laughs> love you but hello wake up <laughs> but whatever the new normal is those people that are coming out of drugs out of that world out of the pain that, sur that are surviving it and don't know how and they're coming looking for a church when this thing is over they're not looking for, for a church with fabricated glory we got the best platform we got the, you got the coolest lights you got the biggest screen it's awesome it's cool but when these people show up this harvest is not going to care 
You mark it down that I said it. The harvest that's coming to your church is not going to care how great all this is. Up. They want to know, can you heal my cancer? Can you save my marriage? Can you get my kid off drugs? Can you deliver my mind? People fabricate the real thing when they're not consecrated enough to produce the real thing. But I tell you right now, you can have all this and it's beautiful. But the one thing you've got to make sure is at the top. When they walk in these doors, they've got to know they've entered the house of power and authority where they can be changed and they can be delivered and they can be rescued. We're getting ready to pray. Her baby was born August 24, 21st last week and different nurses were coming in doing different things and I went to the house to check on the other three kids and how many kids we have now? And, uh, and this nurse walked in and she wanted to test our baby. His name is Jackson. Baby Jax is hearing. So she's checking on Jax and she's looking in his ears and, and then she told my wife this. My wife called me. She said, man, there's something different about you. My wife's laying in the bed and... The lady goes, you know, I was a pastor's wife. And then we did missions work in Peru. This pandemic just took us out. We were so discouraged. She said, my husband got into a car accident. And she said, he was so out of it and so discouraged. He just gave the people information to just call me, whatever, his insurance. Went home, got some alcohol. Just defeated a preacher. And the cops come and arrest him for leaving the scene. The judge throws the book at him. Three years in prison. And she said, before that, we had tried different churches and we had passed through. We were just, and she said, last week I had my first Zoom call with him since he's been in prison. She said, it, it, it was great until he lowered his mask and they cut the call off for him lowering his mask. And she said these words. I told him. I've got to find a Pentecostal church because that's the only place I know where I feel something in the altar. And she said, she looks at my wife and my wife says, my husband's a Pentecostal preacher. And the lady starts getting emotional saying, okay, God brought me in here. And my wife's connecting with the Bible study with her now. A former preacher's wife, different denomination, losing everything. And said, there was one time I was in a Pentecostal church. And now that she's on the bottom, she doesn't care about the show, the lights, the great sir. She wants to know, is there some atmosphere that can fix my husband when he comes out of the jail? Is there an atmosphere that can heal my broken heart while I'm suffering while waiting? Is there an atmosphere that can protect my baby until our family's back together? And I want to ask this city, and I want to speak to this city and ask this church, this city needs to hear that there is an atmosphere. I should preach on atmospheres next week. There's an atmosphere in this city that can deliver you from anything you're bound by. You might be in this room right now. You might be afflicted and tormented, but I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, we have the real thing. I did a seminar for General Conference last week, and one of the statements I made to our pastors was this. I am getting scared that our pastors are now more excited about views online than baptisms. More excited about how many people stopped by their website than how many people got the Holy Ghost. God help us. Because we've got, no matter what's thrown against us and how hard we're being attacked or persecuted, we must have revival. We must win the city. We must do a The Bible said in Egypt, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. In Acts 8, the more they attacked them, they scattered, and they went everywhere preaching. You're not waiting for revival. You are the revival. Get away from the entertainment and connect yourself to the anointing. Get away from chilling during a pandemic and connect yourself to consecrating. Somebody get a walk with God. Somebody get a prayer life going. Somebody repent of some things your eyes have been seeing and let the enemy know I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm I'm leaving. I'm not staying bound. I'm not staying depressed. I'm not staying discouraged. I am going to be free. I put the mic down right now. Would you pray or would you leave? 
you want to come to the front, wherever you want to do it, you want to pray in your pew. But I don't want you to come pray, bless me also. I want you to pray, God, get my eyes right. Get my ears right. If you can't hear God's because there's too many other voices. You can't hear God. Maybe you should turn some other things down. Listen to the voice of the Spirit. For entertainment is intoxicating our people. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. But there's no music. Exactly. Welcome to a relationship with prayer. Get past your flesh. Get past your flesh. You might want to step out of the pew. You might want to do something different. I don't know. Maybe you want to kneel down at the pew. But you might want to just fight your flesh right now. The show is over. The show is over. The preaching is done. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Moses is leaving Egypt. Moses is headed to a mountain to meet God. Someone needs to recognize what's in your midst right now and pursue it. I've told you before, the average altar call lasts seven minutes in North America. We don't know how to pray. Help us to learn how to linger. Help us to learn to pray until we're out of our flesh, until we're laying things down that we didn't want to lay down. Come on, lay something down you don't want to. Talk about something you don't want to talk about with God. Deal with something you don't want to deal with. Admit something you don't want to admit. And watch how things change. Watch him reach down. We want answers from God. Throw some extra stuff on the altar. You want some answers from God, Elijah? Put some stuff on the altar. You want some answers from God? Lay some things down. You don't have to lay down, but you want to lay down. Lay aside the sin and the weight. The weight and the sin. Not just the sin, but there might be some things that are not sinful, but they're just weighing you down spiritually. They're keeping you disconnected. They're keeping you from having God dreams. Why are you getting attacked in your dreams? What are you watching before you go to sleep? What are you praying? Are you praying at all? Are you connected at all? Is there anything going on in your spirit? In the 930 service, an angel of the Lord was in this room, and he walked by different pews, and people randomly began to cry out, randomly out of nowhere, and began to wail and speak in tongues because an angel was passing them by. I ask you, Lord, send that angel again right now. Let him go walk the aisles. Let him walk through the chairs. Let him walk and touch people that need their eyes open and their spirits open to the word of God. Come on, somebody, break through. Come on, I'm, I'm pushing you, but you, you know how to do it. You know how to pray. You know how to break down and let it go. Let those things go. Let those walls down. There's a voice calling me from an old rugged tree. And he whispers, draw closer to me. Leave your cares behind. There are new heights to climb. New things in me you'll find. Whatever it takes to draw closer to you, Lord, that's what I'll be willing to do. Whatever it takes to be more like you, that's what I'll be willing to do. There we go. I think the angel is here. I think the angel has arrived. Lord, loose the angels. Loose them into every home. Loose them into every home. Come on, help us to stop getting over moves of God so quickly.
Help us to stop looking at our watches and clocks every time the service starts to break out. Well, we, we're going longer than normal today. Come on, you're stuck. You're stuck in a mentality. You're stuck in entertainment mode. You're stuck in a culture. He didn't look at his watch on the cross. There is a breakthrough and a breakdown at odds right now. I definitely feel spiritual warfare, Pastor Zuniga. I feel spiritual warfare going on in this church right now. I feel angels fighting demons in the spirit. I feel like people are saying, God, help me. And that's loosing the angels to go at war with the things that the people had let in in the demonic world. There's something going on right now in the heavenlies. Someone needs to let the angels loose. Let the angels loose in your home. Let the angels loose in your marriage. Let God loose in your conversation. Let God loose in the, on the screen. Let God loose. Come on. Stop giving everything to the, de to the devil. Come on, someone. Let the enemy know. No, 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 no. That's for me in my house. Come on, forgive us for hypocrisy. Forgive us for trying to flow down two currents, for drifting in two streams, for trying to have revival while we're relaxed. You can never have relaxed revival. You can never have chilled church and see a harvest. You can never have a time where you take time off while the devil keeps fighting you and fighting you. We all need to rest. I understand. I understand there's times to rest. But be careful when your rest transforms into relaxation and carnality takes over your mind. And it's hard to stir yourself. It's hard to awaken yourself. Let the word get in your spirit. Wake up the mighty men. Wake up the mighty men. Somebody start praying, I'm tired of drifting. I'm tired of having no control. I'm, I'm tired of having no uh, priorities right. I'm tired of just letting things happen and living in reactionary mode to what happens in my day rather than taking control of my day. Well, I'll pray if I get around to it. That's why I haven't prayed in 12 days. I'll read my Bible tomorrow, I promise. That's why I haven't read your Bible in weeks because you're trying to get around to it. It's part of the flow. It's got to become everything to you. I feel the Holy Ghost. It's time to reprioritize everything. It's time to put God back on the throne. A prayer meeting is the most important appointment that you have tomorrow. And nothing else matters. How can God direct my steps if I never check in with his orders? How can God counsel me if I never read his word? I feel prophetic anointing. I feel the prophetic in here right now. I feel the prophetic anointing of God in here right now. Pray for God to let you rest. But be careful when you start wanting relaxation over rest. That's when your guard is down. Rest is spiritual. God rested on the seventh day. Did not say God relaxed. Rest. Feed your spirit. Meditate on the things of God. Listen for his voice. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel like I'm in a fight with something right now, but I feel the Holy Ghost pushing me, pulling on me. Stop drifting. You're further downstream than you think. 
Stop drifting. Swim. Swim for it. Swim for it. I'll close with this. I'm going to give this to your pastor. The first time Peter saw Jesus on the water, he said, if it's you, bid me come. He wanted to walk on water. But the second time, after the crucifixion and resurrection, when Peter had drifted into backsliding, cursing, and going fishing and back to his old life, he sees Jesus on the shore. And the Bible said he dove in the water and swam to him. Didn't ask, let me walk on it. Just said, I've got to get to him. Didn't care what it looked like this time. Just got to get to him. You know you've drifted when you have to swim for it. When you're asking for lower things, you're not asking to walk on the water now. Just God, get me out of this. Some of you need to start swimming. You're going to walk on the water again, but start swimming. Start fighting the current. Don't let Fox News and CNN be your source of peace. Because they'll give you one good report and you'll feel good. And then one bad report and you'll think the world's ending every second. Get back in the word. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right. Sorry for bugging you on that right there. I'm sorry. There's tongues and interpretation in here. Pastor, the Lord is going to give you a series on the mind, the head, some kind of series on the mind or the head soon because there is extreme. This is two times in the service this morning. There was tongues and interpretation in and out. Both times God is trying to get into the heads of this church, into the mind. And I'm telling you, there must be an extreme warfare going on in the minds of some great people. And the Lord wants to bring victory inwardly and it will manifest outwardly i felt it so strongly as he was speaking just now in the holy ghost that i will speak to pastor and i will give him a series on the mind and so i don't know what's going to happen in that but that's going to be transformative there's about to be inward victory like you've never imagined and i'm going to say this too there's about to be a flow of peace in your house in your marriage in your conversations, in your finances. He I feel a witness of the Spirit right now. Someone lift up your hands right now. Pastor's coming. Give your mind to God right now. Give your mind to God. Give your mind to God. I'd like everybody to stand real quick. Brother Harry, we received that word. You have imparted unto us. You don't want to miss the next couple of weeks, the next couple of Wednesdays. God is just going to build upon what he started today. And I promise you, God is up to something incredible in your life and in this church. I had two texts this morning. Neither one of them knew that we were, they were texting me, but I got a text. There was a pastor, the pastor of the Apostolic Church in Gallatin. His name is Marcus he had an aneurysm yesterday, and he passed away. He's about 40 years old. These are friends of the houses, and uh, this church is in, in need, and we're going to pray over this church. I had another pastor contact me this morning. 
And I want to just read a text to you. He said, if you have anyone in your church who can cook, we don't have, uh, this is the, let me just set the stage here. The Hurricane Laura came through Baton Rouge and Lake Charles area. They're in the Lake Charles area. If I showed you pictures of their church, it's devastated. He said, if anyone in your church can cook, we don't have it anywhere to eat. We have served 2,500 meals in the last two days, but we can't keep it up. We have just cooked on a grill on the side of the road, and people have waited over an hour for just a plate of lunch or breakfast burrito. It doesn't matter if it's hot dogs. We have food for today and tomorrow. If you can help, that would be much appreciated. I don't know what to do, and I wrestle with this. You know, I, all I know to do is bring it to this church and pray. But as God begins to transform us, God's going to use us at the same time. You're in a spiritual battle, church. You're in a spiritual battle. This is not just holding on till we get through. This is putting our minds in tune. And just to confirm what you were saying, just to confirm, I'm going to tell you the verse that was going in my mind as you were saying that. You had no idea. It's the, it's the verse that Paul wrote to Timothy. He said, put them in remembrance of these things. Put them in the remembrance of these things. I'm telling you the series that was going in my mind is things that you should never forget. That's exactly seconds before you said that. Seconds. Seconds. Lord Jesus, I bring these needs to you right now, God. We're your people. We don't know what to do, but in the name of Jesus, I speak, God, in authority and such a calm clarity, God, and in confirmation. I pray over this church of faith that rises in the midst of ashes and concerns, God, that you are the solution and that your ways are perfect, God. I don't know how to answer these needs, but I speak a word over this family, the Moors, God, that are suffering loss through an aneurysm, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray over that church. I pray over these young children. I pray over this spouse. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would help and bring comfort and strength to them, God, as they navigate a new reality. I pray over this pastor in Moss Bluff, Lake Charles, oh God, that their community has been devastated, God. Lord, I don't know how we're supposed to help, but I pray the answer will show up, God. I'm asking for bold faith. I'm asking, God, in this uh, revival that we would trust you, Lord. I know there's a little bit that's uncomfortable, God. I know there's a part of it that's plowing up some things, God, uh, that is surfacing some things that must be surfaced. But give us the courage and the belief, God, that this is working out for your glory, oh God. I pray it in the name of of Jesus Christ. I speak it over this congregation and I give you honor and glory in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. Would you shout it to God one more time? Would you shout it to God one more time, God? Come on, would you every man in this building? Come on, if you're watching, shout it to God. Every lady, if you're watching, shout it to God. Victory is on its way. Oh. In the name of Jesus. And will you just submit this prayer? Say in the name of Jesus. Brother Joe. Understand. I'll give five hundred dollars for the for to help the people in, in Louisiana. If anybody wants to meet the challenge. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Joe, Joe, you gotta know Joe. Joe, Joe's he's not a wealthy man. He's a faithful man for sure. I didn't ask him to do that, I promise you. I don't just I'm, I don't know what to do. I don't know what Brother Pittman. Thank you, Brother Pittman. Hey Amen. I, I I don't I I just don't obey God and say are we going to be a part of the answer? Yes, Sister Helpman. Say it again. Five hundred dollars. Thank you, Sister Helpman. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Five hundred. Thank you. Yes. Five hundred. Yes. There's, there's zero pressure. Just whatever God can. Yes. Let's go. Five hundred. Thank you. Yes. Oh my God. That's, that's a single mom. I'm just telling you, it's either we're going to walk in the spirit and we're going to let God lead this church 
or we're going to try to just manage this thing. But I'm telling you, if we'll trust God, God will do something incredible among us. And I promise you, there's revival in this. There is a supernatural revival. Come on, one more time. Let's just give God the glory. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, if you want to give, that is on you. You can, you can connect with the church office, me, Pastor Dan. But I want you to know I love you. Please don't miss Wednesday. Please don't miss Sunday. It's going to happen. I promise you, something supernatural is going to take place. Lord, I pray the peace of God. I speak, God, your favor upon your people. Lord, this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice. As we depart today, we depart in your presence. Meet every family, every marriage, every home. And God, we're going to pray over remiss here in a moment, but I'm asking for you, God, to go with those, God, today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Brother Remez, if you don't mind, would you come real quickly? Would you just come quickly, Pastor Dan? Brother Bill, if you'll grab my mask real quick. I'm going to invite those. If you would love to stand with, thank you, thank you, son. If you'd like to stand with Ramez, would you just come? If you want to gather around him, we're going to do this real quick. And I know we're going a little bit later, but I'd like for as many of you that would want to, would you gather around Ramez? He's got decisions to make. He's, he's got a home here. He's got jobs here. He's, he's going to go away for a while. And there's a lot that God needs to do. But I, I believe the church family is what, how we see things through. Amen. We, we partner with one another. And would you just stretch your hand forth right now? Would you do that? Oh, in the name of Jesus. I pray the power of the Holy Ghost, oh God. God, I speak your favor right now, God, over Remes. I speak your hand to rest upon him, oh Lord. God, I'm asking for you to ordain his steps and give him wisdom. I pray for clarity, oh God, and favor. I pray, God, the open door that no man can shut. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God. God, protect him as he goes. I pray you bring him back safely, oh Lord. I'm asking, Lord, that you put angels about him. And we thank you for him, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, would you just put your hands together one last time?